After you've gone too far physically in a relationship, or maybe even established a habit of sexual sin, how do you leave that all behind? Mm, we're talking about bidding adieu to sexual sin today on Love Ed with Julie and MJ. This week we wrap up our discussion on Hebrews 12 verses 16 through 17. I believe it's the most overlooked scripture on sex in the entire Bible, so if you've missed the other three episodes, I encourage you to start at the beginning because it's an important discussion we've been having. The scripture says, See to it that no one is sexually immoral or unholy like Esau, who sold his birthright for a single meal. For you know that afterwards, when he desired to inherit the blessing, he was rejected, for he found no chance to repent, though he sought it with tears. And repentance is what we're focusing on today, as it is the last of the three steps to freedom from sexual sin. Yay! <laughs> In our last episode, we talked about step one, which is confessing our sin, and then step two, which is receiving God's forgiveness. And step three is repentance. You have to repent. Actually, you know, if a confession is genuine, repentance is naturally going to follow, because if I'm truly sorry, then I am going to want to change. Yes, but it is so hard to break habitual sin. I mean, there's a reason why we call it addiction. Amen. In fact, if I'm honest... I don't usually want God to change me. I want God to change my circumstances. Because <laughs> it would be easier that way. Yes, but then that only shows I'm not really sorry for my sin. I'm just sorry for the mess that I got myself in. Can, can anybody relate? No, I'm alone. Repentance means to turn away from our sin and go the other direction. And so that requires that we learn to resist or avoid temptation, not just have God take temptation away. Um, it's about God changing our heart and mind and then changing our behavior, not just him changing our circumstances so life is easier. So what would some of that change look like? Well, for starters, you're going to need to bring that sin out of the closet because you're going to need some help. Because sin thrives in darkness, but it dies in the light. So seek help from a couple other people who know you best and love you most. And when Mike says love you most, he's not talking about some sentimental love that just wants to see you happy. No, I'm talking about a true love that wants to see you whole and complete, mature, even if it means you have to walk through some tough stuff. Next, you need to put boundaries in place to protect yourself and those you've been sinning with. Or sinning against. We actually recommend one single sex boundary to simplify all of that. You can check that out at the link at the end of this video. But what if you struggle more than just going too far on a date? If you're struggling with pornography or a pattern of sexual immorality, you're going to need to set up some serious boundaries that are probably going to cramp your style in significant ways. Well, speaking of cramping your style, Jesus himself said that if your eye causes you to stumble, then pluck it out. Mm, Of course, the point of Jesus' hyperbole is this. Do whatever it takes to break free. Leave no room for compromise. Uh, To quote an article from Desiring God, uh, someone trying to overcome a heroin addiction cannot be okay with carrying heroin around in their pocket. Yet many who struggle with pornography carry the delivery device around in their pocket everywhere they go. So if internet porn is the problem, you may need to downgrade to a flip phone. If the problem is a certain person, you may need to cut off that relationship. If the problem's a certain part of town, don't go there. If the problem is everyone that you know in town, maybe you need to consider moving. To be clear, healthy boundaries are not about legalism. They're about logic. If you really want to leave your sexual sin in the past, then you must come up with boundaries that make resisting temptation, or better yet, avoiding temptation, a realistic prospect. And that takes us back to those friends who know what's going on in your life. Enlist their help in putting your sexual sin in the past. In putting your sexual sin to death. Because today, you are not like Esau with no chance to repent, though you sought it with tears. So when you sin, number one, confess. Number two, accept Jesus' gift of forgiveness and walk in the freedom of his grace. And number three, in that grace, repent. Mm. 
Turn from the ways that have led you to sin. Stop believing that your sin is better than the joy of obedience. Amen. And that's a wrap on the most overlooked scripture on sex in the Bible. But we've been in the middle of a broader series called Dating 101. A series where we've been sharing 10 fresh perspectives on dating to change your relationship life. We'll share our ninth perspective next week. And when you hear what that perspective is, you'll understand better why we've spent so much time on the topic of sex. Other than the fact that you just can't stop talking about it. <laughs> Join us then for more Love Ed with Julie and MJ. Love Ed with Julie and MJ. Okay. That was probably terrible. That was terrible. <laughs> the best okay. thing that I liked about that take was that it's over. My turn towards you, am I good? Shoulders? Mm -hmm. Don't look sexy. Don't look sexy. That's no. All I know. <laughs>